Hey, friends. Sorry, I'm not looking at you yet. I'm trying to make sure we're all set. But yeah, welcome to this week's video. Um, this week isn't going to be a review, um, just because I got a bunch of stuff all at once and I got overwhelmed and I essentially passed out from the review. Um, just because they all came at once. So like all this delays and stuff that I've been telling you about, hopefully I was hoping that they would come in more staggered, but they did it. So I got everything like on the same day and I was like, oh, what do I do first? And then I got all freaked out about planning and storytelling and all that other stuff. And I was just like, let me focus on work because that's less stressful. I don't know. Anyway, um, just to give you perspective, we got this duo link speaker, which will probably be the next one. Um, we have the Mod Mic 5. We have the Sennheiser PC 38X drop blah, 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 blah. And um, the Neural Loop headset attachments and a bunch of other stuff. So everything kind of came at once. Um, but we'll get through it at some point. It's just not going to happen this week because I panicked. <laughs> I panicked. Anyway, so it is going to be a Wednesday. So I'm just going to throw some other whack Wednesday content out here. Um, last week or last time we did these video, this video, it was around New Year's. Uh, pretty stupid advertisements to get you ready for the new year. This time around, since I've taken those out of my saved files from Instagram, it is now camera stuff. I do a decent amount of searching for like camera and audio equipment. So that's probably why that came up next in the priority. Um, but yeah, some of them are viable, some of them aren't. So let's, let's check it out together and see what we think. Uh, so the first one I think is a holster. Let's check it out. Uh, what lens do you think he dropped? If at all. Because lenses aren't cheap. But if he dropped one, I'm guessing it's a prime because there's less moving parts. It had to be a cheapy cheap lens because who would drop a lens? Two hundred twenty. It's a good number. It means you can hold like three giant grandmaster lenses. Manufacturing wise, this must be annoying because you probably have to make one of these for every type of camera mount there is. See, I, I'm guessing this is targeted at, at, at event photographers just because of the fact that when else would you be flipping around lenses this much? If I'm going out for a hike or doing street photography, I'll usually pick the zoom that is most versatile. Um, and if I don't have solid zooms on the camera that I have, I'll probably pick a couple lightweight primes. Um, so I don't see this being an issue for normal people, but I guess for event photographers, it'll help you be a quick switch. See, but now that I think about it again, in event photography, you don't necessarily want to be switching lenses a lot. And again, I'm not no professional here, um, but from my friends that shoot this stuff and from what I've seen at weddings that I've attended, these guys carry around like three cameras each and there's like a crew of three. Um, so, you know, they have the, they have their like the 200 or 300 millimeter for those close in shots from far away. They have their 20 to 70s for the everyday range or the every scenario range. So they have a bunch of lenses. But like the thing is, if you swap a lens, you got to switch all your settings around. And with a wedding where you're trying to capture moments and capture expressions that just happen so quickly there's no time to switch these things unless you're like on a lunch break so like generally i'm guessing that's why they carry around the cameras is so i don't have to switch around the settings so while this is a is cool and novelty i can't imagine an event photographer actually using this um they would probably just that's why they carry around so many that's why their camera equipment is so crazy and so heavy is they carry around multiple bodies to these things and that's why they're like carrying like literally thousands of dollars a gear on their body Yeah, I mean, even thinking about it, like, from a, a practical sense, like, 
if I was just shooting around, I mean, I guess you could use it on travel, but that just would put you, that for me, especially if you're in a foreign country or a place that's known for like pickpockets, like that just puts a target on your back. Everyone knowing how, what lenses you have, how many lenses you have, and you're taking photography, like that's just not good. That's why a lot of people that when they pick their camera bags, um, pick like inconspicuous bags because they don't want people knowing that it's a camera bag. So they're stolen. It just seems a little bit impractical, but let's see how much it costs. So no matter what you pick, I'm going to just put Sony because that's what I got. Um, it's $69.99. So 170 bucks. It's a little expensive to me. I could get a nice camera bag for that. Um, that can carry, you know, three lenses <laughs> and also recording equipment and also extra batteries and lights, all things that you probably need for event photography. Um, so to me, a backpack is probably a backpack or a camera sling or something like that is a lot more effective for 170 bucks than this would be. This is really just one purpose of lenses only, but generally the people that would need this probably need a bunch of other equipment as well. So hard for me to see that some people would buy this, but to each his own On to the next. So these people, Spider holster comes up a ton for me. I have no idea why. Quick draw system where you can just, you know, swap in, swap out your cameras really quick. Um, so it's, it's, I'm not sure how, you know, beneficial that would be. Um, at least in from the, the form factor that they use. And the reason why it's, it's, it's difficult for me to think about that is because of the fact that it is such a big bottom plate. Um, it's huge and, you know, I can't adapt my own plate on it as well. Um, it probably is not going to fit on a tripod after that. So if you're doing handheld only, that's fine, I suppose. Um, but I'm just used to things like Peak Design where they have like a whole system around it where I can swap back. And again, I haven't looked at their whole stuff. Maybe they have like ball heads and tripod adapters and stuff like that. But like from Peak Design's perspective, it's a plate and that plate is used for everything they do. And then also like it's become such a like a popular standard that other companies, especially third parties, have made ball heads that you can use their stuff that have adaptable plates or adaptable yeah, heads and adapters for those peak design plates. So it's it's hard for me to, to seize this any better. And just like the way that it kind of sits there, it's like kind of swivelly, which is kind of a cool mechanism. Um, but I you know, it's it's just you have that lens sticking out and it just doesn't seem that secure. I don't know if you guys have played with the the capture plate or the ca capture system from Peak Design, but that's the best one I've seen. I know Polar Pro has one too, but it, I, I've heard that it just doesn't hold up as well as the capture. The capture literally, you can do jumping jacks. You can run around with it. You can jostle that everywhere, and that will that will, that camera will stay locked on you. Like you can you can literally swing some weight around it, and it'll keep it in place. So that's the most reliable one. So if you're looking for something like this, I would definitely recommend Peak Design just because it's been it's more reliable, and it's and you know more, a lot more people use it. It's probably more adaptable. Like looking through these accessories, like this looks like a huge freaking plate. Like it's gigantic. So it's not doesn't look like it's all that convenient or easy to wear. The other thing with these, these spider things is they have multiple products like they have an action camera version i'm going to put it on the screen here and it's like why would i do that like why would i have with the handle some camera upside down and then like swing it out like this why do i need that here and then he shows like i'm going to switch it to my my sh shoulder to my hip so i can crouch down you could easily crouch down with that thing here so that doesn't make sense either like, why would you need to do that? That's like the most useless action in the world. And I think the thing that's frustrating me for this one is it, I thought it was like the handle. It was like integrated with like the whole handle as a system. But if we go forward a little bit more, yeah, here we go. It's literally just a strap. You can put, you put it on the handle that you want to put it on. So that is like the most cheap thing ever. And then it uses a clip that's not even adaptable with the previous clip that you saw. So like, it's not like I can have one belt system and use, you know, my action cam on it, or I could use my, um, what do you call it? My, my DSLR on it. It's one of those situations of, oh, now I have to use two different clips to use their system, which is dumb. God, and just, I don't know, just everything about this is so cringe. Oh yeah, 
and for some reason their ad is like they did a silent version and at the end they decide to do like a 90s matrix amp up music of the same ad just with this weird music I can't. So they have a bunch of plates you can buy and pouches. Wow, if, if the plate is 55 bucks, how much? So camera setup is $150. <laughs> oh, it's worse than I thought. It has a whole belt. It's not just a clip. It's a whole holster. You're going to look like a cowboy out here. Bruh, that's terrible. Bruh, that's so bad. Also, this is a really awkward picture. What's he doing here? Creep. Um, dude, what? Look how big that plate is. Can we talk about how giant that plate is? Like, what can you do with that? Jeez. Um, I mean, I can't put a tripod on there. I don't know what the hell they're expecting. But this is the weirdest thing. Like, that would be so annoying on your hip. And like, oh, look, it's so awkward. Uh -huh. No, we're not doing this. Don't recommend. If you guys want something like this, get the capture clip. Peak design, let's go. Enough of this. <laughs> On to the next one. Jeez, why? Oh. oh, AER. So they have always awesome film. I'm gonna lie. Like, like the shots they get are pretty dope. Um, and it's pretty simple. It's like a Nerf ball, basically. So they, put, they allow you to put a GoPro on it. See, but my qualms around this is that I think that this should be a 360 cam because of the fact that not all of us can throw it with accuracy and distance of Pat Mahomes. Uh, this is very, I have one perspective, the, 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 you know, the nose will go up and down accordingly and I'll get those shots. However, if you want to do a low angle shot, you can't get all that sort of stuff. Or if you want to have something more interesting, you can't. And this is where I think having a 360 cam gives you that perspective because you can always move the camera around to get some cool angles. And this is what um, Insta360 did with their like, what the hell is it called? I don't know, it was like a dart. But you could throw it like between people's legs, you can throw it underneath like stairs, you could throw it between like ropes and get some really cool shots of like, you know, passing shots. You can zoom in, zoom out, you can, um, you know, track a, a person. Um, and I thought that was just a little bit better execution. While they do a good job of representing the best shots that you can get from this, and their, you know, their use of like slow motion and stuff like that with their editing is cool. Um, it's just, it's just limited. It's, it's more limited than 360 cam would be. So let's look how much the AER costs. Mm, okay, so the AER is 79 euros. Cheaper if you go for different colors, but to me that's a little bit pricey, and and I don't think it's all that. Travelable? Is that a word? No. Um, it's not that portable. So like something like this, it's not something that I would just use in the backyard or street photography. This would probably be something where I could take it on vacation. Like, you know, I throw it off a boat. I throw it off on, on the beach. Um, I throw it off a building. I don't know. Like I throw it somewhere where there's going to be like really cool scenery and, you know, um, fun things to see. Um, not necessarily something where I'm just walking to the bus station. I'm going to be using this. So this seems like a vacation prop, um, but this is just huge to me. Look how big that is. That's gigantic. Imagine putting that in your luggage. The, the reason why I wanted to bring up the, the 360 one is because it's much smaller. So if we look at this, the drifter, drift shot, drifter. Yes, the drifter um, is what they had. And it was way smaller. I actually thought about buying this, but I just never thought I would be able to use it, but it was just so cool. Like when you look at these shots, like what's great about this is the G or the G3, the um, uh, Insta360's app is, is really, really cool. Like it's one of the better uh, apps that I've seen from an action camera and uh, it's intuitive. So like here you can see he threw it underneath the skateboarder and he was able to track that subject through the entire pass. So you get this cool like flyby shot. Um, so that's something that you probably wouldn't be able to do with the AER because you can't track backwards like you can with a 360 cam. Um, and like I said before, like editing this and like tracking this stuff and the different pieces is really easy through the app. And the AER is not going to have an app that will help assist that because you want the GoPro app to drive that since it's, it's that product. Um, but yeah, so like as we like look at some of these these examples here, 
Like you can throw it over someone and track them the whole way through. With the AER, it would just pass through and you'd only see the mat after it passed. Like the same thing with this basketball here. You can track his face. You can, uh, what do you call it, speed up, speed out, and then get some really cool perspectives. While for the AER, you just shoot it straight out and you wouldn't get that. Um, so I think Insta360 just did it a little bit better. How much is that drifter? Let's check. I don't sell it anymore. Die case. Yo, do I don't sell this thing anymore. Oh, I, I mean, I guess they don't sell it anymore. Uh, the only place I could find it is on AliExpress. I wonder if that's I wonder if that's indicative of sales. Like maybe they didn't sell that many, so maybe there's not a market for this as much as they'd expect. But this looks like a better implementation than what the AER is. So I don't know how much AER is selling, but it just seems like there's a lot of shortcomings, I would say, around that product. Oh, this one. The Platypod. I was going to crap on this, but the more I looked at it, I'm like, oh, when would this be useful? I just, it's just, there's just so much around it. Like, I get it. Like, the reason why this is interesting to me is because I don't, well, like, at, at first, it doesn't seem like it would replace a tripod. One, because it would be way too annoying to adjust each of those little feet to make it work, um, as well as you could only get low angle. In reality, you could only get really low angle. So I can't imagine it being super versatile and replace a tripod. However, it is pretty small. So it's just a plate, and you can use any ball head on top of it giving you some flexibility. So your favorite ball head, you can throw on it and it'll work with this platypod. I mean, that plate I can fit anywhere. I can fit it into like a tablet sleeve pocket in my backpack. So I can see like if you were hiking or you're backpacking around and you need, but you're also taking your DSLR, this might be cool. But again, you could only get those low angle shots. So again, not gonna replace a tripod, but I can't imagine when you would need to get that high angle shot, I guess. Uh, when you're traveling around, it's something that you wouldn't just do handheld. But if you're trying to like vlog and like shoot yourself, this might be a good option to get those shots. Hmm. See, like that's cool. Like, so they have accessories that allow you to do some more cinematic stuff like pans. But again, it seems like you need to get into their ecosystem to really um, get the power of it all. But the reason why I thought that this is, I started, was gonna begin crapping on this is because of this advertisement that they got. Let me bring it up. Like, first of all, that music literally wrecked my ears. That was straight, straight painful. Also, whoever made this was using some sort of animation tool from the 90s, because I've, I've seen PowerPoint presentations with better styling than this. Whether you already have a tripod or you're about to buy your very first one, what you're about to see will change everything. It's a proven winner because of its size and how it works. It's this aircraft grade aluminum platform that comes with four spiked and rubber feet so that you can mount a ball head. See, this, oh, see like the spike thing is weird to me because like, again, you got to screw that in every single time and you got sharp pieces coming out. But I have seen instances where people like have drilled this into a fence. So like, I guess there would be options where you could actually find some use for this. But um, that's just weird for me to have it. And you know, maybe it's just the nature of the beast, but it just seems weird and unrefined because it has these metal pokey parts. Into it and put your camera reliably on flat surfaces, rocks, tree branches, in a refrigerator. The possibilities are so much more than that. Was the weirdest thing in a refrigerator? Like that is a a reason why you'd buy this tripod is because you want to put your get these inside the fridge shots. The other kind of tripod, and it even comes with a twenty inch cinch strap so that you can secure it to pull. Okay, that. That is not something I considered. The cinch strap actually solves what we were talking about before. So like, again, tripods have a higher perspective and you have a little bit more movement on there or a little bit more flexibility than just low angle shots. But if you have that cinch strap and it's strong enough, 
He could potentially get that higher angle shot by putting her on a tree pole or something like that. So you got more versatility. Huh. How much is this thing? Oh, okay. Not too bad. I mean, I don't know what that is. Uh, 99 bucks for the multi kit, 130 for all the essentials. The essentials comes with a ball head, uh, strap, case, the sticks, and the actual plate itself. Do I need all 130? What's. I feel like I would just need this. It's so like literally 59 bucks. Yeah, 59 bucks. That's a cheap system. Which. Again, if you're if you travel a lot, this might be have some viability here. And the reason why I'm I'm impressed here is because if you can use that cinch to get you some flexibility, then I guess I would that that might be way better. Because because like the reason why I was hesitant on this thing is because I have the Peak Design um, travel tripod, and it's really small. It's the smallest tripod I've, I've ever seen, and it folds down super small, so it fits into most pockets. Water bottle on a backpack and it's not that heavy and I can travel with it anywhere, but it's not as light as that. And this is 270 bucks, 600 if you get the, the carbon fiber one. You obviously know I didn't buy the carbon fiber one. Um, so it's just, a, it's a lot more pricey and a lot heavier. So I guess if you can get creative and you can deal with not perfect balancing, you could get away with 59 bucks, especially if you have a ball head already, 130. Again, you're still cheaper. like. All this stuff is cheaper than like a full out tripod, quality tripod at least. Oh, I might have to come back to you someday. Hmm. But I'm not traveling, so I'm not going to buy anything <laughs> today at least, but I'll keep it in my back pocket. That might be some interestingness. I'll find a trip for it though. So that got kind of long. Um, I guess that's what happens when I like shoot these really late at night. I'm not as eloquent as I normally am. Anyway. Um, I'm gonna split this up into two parts just to make sure that it's a little bit more digestible, especially since it's more casual content than my normal stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want to see the next part, check the link above. If you're new here, uh, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, and doing all the things you normally do on a video that you love. And if you're returning, thank you for staying soon with me. Definitely keep track of me on chat below in the comments or hit me up on Instagram uh, if you have some suggestions on dumb ads to check out, dumb Kickstarter projects or anything that you want me to check out. Um, but yeah, I've been appreciating you guys staying tuned and I will talk to you shortly. Anyway, as always, I appreciate you.